Good evening, I'm Alex Matthew and you're watching Bloomberg Quint Live. The equity benchmarks both lost upwards of 0.4% and the broader markets lost more on profit booking. So, what did you miss? Let's go straight to the headlines. Arvind Limited's board approves the demerger of a branded uh, apparel and engineering businesses. The demerger will help individual businesses chart their own growth paths, says Chairman Sanjay Lalbhai. Deputy Chief Minister of Delhi Manish Sisodia has ordered that all private and government schools in Delhi be closed for the remainder of the week. This comes as a result of severe air pollution in the city. Aviation Minister Gajapati Raju orders an independent report uh, from the DGCA into the alleged assault of a passenger by Indigo Airlines staff. Donald Trump touches down in China, strengthening trade ties and dealing with North Korea's aggression uh, is a top on Trump's agenda. Also on the show, we have uh, Vijay Shekhar Sharma, the founder and CEO of Paytm, talking about one year of demonetization and his growth outlook for the mobile wallet turned pay payments bank. Now, it is a domestic liquidity that has driven Indian markets in the past year, and uh, Manishi. Uh, Rai Chaudhary of BNP Paribas uh, Securities expects this to continue. He says uh, there has been a structural shift towards financial savings and this would keep the flows going, but adds that valuations look stretched. Listen in. We have seen about 15% increase in consensus earnings estimates of Asia X Japan, but driven mostly by the North Asian markets, Korea, China, Taiwan. India, on the other hand, has seen a drifting down of the consensus earnings estimates. It's only over past one month or so mm. that we have seen a small uptick in these consensus estimates. So, uh, you know, in that sense, India may look a bit stretched, particularly in terms of the valuations, and especially because it's the third best performing market in Asia this year, right? So, um, I think to be really bullish on India, minute to kind of renew our bullishness we will possibly need to see um, a sustainable trend in these earnings improvements that we've seen that said there are some positive indicators just as I said that over past one month in this particular season we have seen better numbers than most people anticipated um, we will have to watch out whether that's likely to remain sustainable or not mm. Indian retailers routinely used to put 15 to 20 percent of their financial savings into equities. They got burned by the successive scandals in mid and late 90s and then they withdrew. Mm -hmm. That confidence is just about building up again. So we are actually very positive, not just in India but across Asia, about this phenomenon of domestic money coming back into risk assets and I think this is likely to continue. Now, Nifty falls for a third straight session, ending the day with cuts of almost half a percent. PSU banks were a drag while the defensives extended support. Neeraj Shah is here with a wrap of the action today. Neeraj, over to you. Well, it was, um, it was probably a disappointing close more than anything else because the markets did correct in late trade, about 47 points down for the Nifty, held 10,300 if that is any psychological importance. The Nifty Bank too corrected about half a percent off. So banks too, uh, they were steady for most part of the day and they came off in the latter half. And similarly for the broader end of the spectrum as well, uh, in the corrective mode, the BSE mid cap index down about three quarters of a percent, the small cap index down one whole percent. So the market breadth wasn't the best. Uh, let's look at what brought the index down first. All in gas under pressure, Reliance more so it's been under pressure for a while now, but down about 19 odd points and HPCL, remember this was standing out in trade yesterday, but today downstream all in gas, all the three OMCs were under a bit of stress. Uh, also, uh, what didn't quite do well is Bharti Airtel, that block deal uh, really putting pressure. The stock did go up to 505 or thereabouts as well, but over the close, about 495. What was bucking the trend though was Tech Mahindra up 4%, Axis Bank up 3%. I think Tech Mahindra follows what IT was trying to do by and large because a clutch of mid-cap IT names too did reasonably well in the session. What didn't do well, select financial names, poor numbers for Manapuram down about 3% and Reliance Capital ever since that uh, listing has been done of the AMC this one is under pressure down 6% today 503 and counting this one has had a one-way ride down over the last uh, few 
uh, not months really, but weeks at least. Uh, lastly, uh, you know, a couple of names which stood out uh, in, in terms of trade were HEG and Graphite India, which corrected after having a really, really good run for the last few days. And then, of course, uh, the index, as we said, uh, having a terrible day. Hopefully, tomorrow won't be as bad. Back to you. Thanks so much for that, Neeraj. Let's move on to one of the big corporate uh, news points today. Arvind Limited will be split into three entities uh, with each division housing its apparel, uh, engineering and textiles business. Yatin Mota joins in with all the details. Yatin, the first question a shareholder will ask, of course, is how much they will get. Uh, if you look at uh, the Arvind Limited's uh, scheme of arrangement which was announced, uh, the management approved the scheme of arrangement basically splitting the company into three verticals. One will be the existing uh, a company Arvind Limited which will be left with the textile business after the scheme of arrangement comes in place. And two other new companies will be formed separately listed on the stock exchanges which is NSC and BAC which will be Arvind uh, uh, you know, Fashions which is the branded apparel business of the company uh, which carries of course uh, bulk of uh, the overall valuation metric and also uh, there will be one uh, engineering division which will be hived off. Uh, now if you were a shareholder of Arvind holding 135 shares uh, for the calculation simplicity, uh, you will be entitled to 5 shares of the engineering business and 27 shares of Arvind brand uh, uh, limited. So uh, basically uh, if you hold 135 shares, you are eligible to get 27 shares in uh, the new uh, you know, branded business and 5 shares in the engineering business. Of course, uh, the stock reacted adversely, uh, uh, you know, was almost down 10% on an intraday basis after the company reported weak set of quarterly earnings and probably uh, the markets already factored in uh, this kind of, a, uh, you know, scheme of arrangement uh, since the management was already talking about a demerger plan. Uh, so net-net, uh, you know, uh, probably at the current valuation, uh, analysts believe that uh, the shares are fully valued. Uh, but it is very interesting to see how really the listing pans out for the Arvind brand, uh, Arvind's brand business because it constitutes uh, nearly uh, you know, uh, 65 to 70% of the overall business valuation of Arvind Limited presently. Yeah, but uh, let's see what the management had to say. Bloomberg Quint caught up with them uh, a short while back. So let's listen. We are setting these companies uh, on an independent course. So uh, Arvind Fashions and Anup Engineering, which is our engineering firm, is being given to the existing shareholders of Arvind Limited. The advantage is that they become independent. They have many more opportunities of raising uh, more financial options of raising uh, resources for organic or inorganic kind of growth. And there is a much higher focus because they are quite independent and away from a conglomerate. Uh, sir, uh, Arvind uh, Fashion last year had, uh, you know, you got in a private equity player. Do we see uh, more private equity private equity players coming and going ahead? And also for Anoop Engineering, you do not uh, your cash, uh, your, you don't have any debt on your book. Going ahead, do we see you picking up any kind of debt to fund growth for this business? See, all options are open. As far as Arvind Fashions is concerned, it is one of the lowest uh, debt equity ratios. Uh, we will be generating uh, reasonably good free cash flows and our next year's all uh, growth uh, requirements, financial growth, uh, I mean the kind of capital which we require, will be more than funded by our internal accruals. Now this is all for organic growth. If something inorganic is being done, we'll explore all possibilities to see as to how they, uh, those, those things can be funded. Okay. Also, going ahead, uh, what are your expansion plans for your fashion business? Are you looking at bringing more global players? Because for some time you haven't brought any global players into the market. I think we have one of the largest set of glo global players in this platform. And I think I heard Kulin saying that we have many businesses which, should, which has immense potential for growth. And they are already in place. So I think the most important agenda before the, the entire fashion brands and fashion business is to take all these businesses to a logical kind of size and grow trajectory in the near future. The Arvind management there. But moving on, a day after the US FDA raised red flags on two of Lupin's biggest manufacturing units, the company today was in firefighting mode. Speaking to Bloomberg Quint, Ram Ramesh Swaminathan, the CFO at Lupin, 
clarified that the US FDA had highlighted just two observations in its warning letter and that the company hoped to resolve these issues within the next 12 months. He also says that the drug major has uh, already shifted the manufacturing of about 12 products to other plants. Listen in. There are two observations which have been listed. You know, there was a total of nine observations between the two plants. Uh, but the uh, warning letter is actually a joint warning letter across both these facilities. Um, it's um, Goa and the second unit is Pitampur. And it lists down two observations. Yeah, and I'll tell you about, um, you know, about both. First off, this is actually relating to out-of-specification uh, testing, you know, uh, the way we do our sampling. Uh, and the second part is relating to, in fact, stability tests relating to uh, you know, uh, holdout units. Uh, both of this obviously caught us by surprise because we didn't expect this to turn out to be a warning letter. Uh, we did think um, that it was something that we would, uh, you know, that we were in the clear and we were expecting, in fact, an EIR for both units. But unfortunately, this development did take place. It's been a year since the demonetization was announced and that move meant 86% of the currency in circulation would no longer be valid. This sent shockwaves across the industry uh, economy and banking system, while some pockets of the financial sector reaped benefits. We caught up with arguably the largest beneficiary of this move, that's Paytm. Mirika Doshi and Neeraj Shah asked the founder, Vijay Shekhar Sharma, whether the digital wallet to payment bank will be able to maintain its growth momentum and achieve the goals that it has set out for itself. Sharma sounded confident, as always. Listen in. We, we, we believe that a disproportionate amount of a target setting helps team rally around those targets and achieve them and I think uh, we've been able to be lucky that we've not just uh, achieved those we've crossed those targets too and I've been very publicly open about it that we'll be 500 million bank customers who are biometrically verified so, and confirmed by 2020 so this yeah. is not this is not conservative this is not lofty really you presume this is uh, something that is very realistic for you yeah, that's right. No, no, okay. no way. Okay. I mean, we'll be the largest bank by the customer base in this country. Okay. That's, that's for sure. Okay. That's our ambition. We want to be like a, a certain percentage of population in the market. Yeah, Vijay, where are you on the payment bank numbers? I think you had said that you were going to set up 31 branches, 33 controlling offices, 3,000 access points. How many customers do you have for the yeah, payment bank yeah. now? Can you give us a yeah, sense of yeah. what the scale is of the bank? Uh, yeah, I think uh, my CEO talked a few days back and she was telling that we are in tens of million customers number and the official number, we want to keep it for the day when we launch with checking account, saving account also okay. uh, so that we can share that number. So that's a very healthy number, number one. And number two is about the number of banking points. So branch, ultra low cost branch, control points and our Paytm, Kai ATM points. Uh, right now we've sent RBI requests of 100,000 banking points in the country. So so when we uh, formally uh, are talking the number of places where customers can walk in, deposit cash, take cash and do the banking is headed towards 100,000 in the first year itself. Vijay, if I may, um, the favorite question that almost everybody has for all high growth companies is uh, what about the funding requirements and ah. how many rounds of fundings and at what valuations would you envisage doing them? I, I know you can't give specific numbers, but any thoughts thereof? Vijay, can I answer this question for you? You can try, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm going to do yeah, it in yeah. Hindi film style, Vijay. Uh, please, I'm going to roll up uh, my first, sleeve. First, you can't see ka. this. You first, can't see this, yes. but I'm going to roll up my sleeve and say to Neeraj, Mere paas Ali Baba hai. Nahi, Mere paas Maa hai. Sorry, damn. Well, you you uh, outdid me on that one. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so Neeraj, uh, I think uh, it, it's important to know that any high growth company, like you said, has to have capital access. I, I think I, I'm privileged that SoftBank and Alibaba and any of our shareholders are, first of all, we have few shareholders and second, we have long term shareholders and with long term capital access. I think that 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 is one of the most important aspect of whatever the plan that we're building. So uh, there's no secret about it that we will need more capital. But as of now, when we look at our books and our availability of capital we're totally well capitalized beyond 2020 also with the number of numbers that we're talking investments and the customer growth yeah uh, that's that said after 2020 we talk about after 2020 
Now, the CBI has named a student of Class 11 in Ryan International School as the new suspect in its probe of seven-year-old Pradyuman's murder. Two months ago, the boy had been found dead in Gurgaon's Ryan International School. Police had arrested Pradyuman's school bus conductor for the crime on the same day. Now, the CBI says the 16-year-old student is its main suspect based on CCTV footage, forensic and scientific evidence. The CBI detained the juvenile for questioning last night. CBI spokesperson Abhishek Dayal has said that the boy wanted his exams as well as parent-teacher meetings to be postponed. Well, Deputy Chief Minister of Delhi Manish Sisodia has ordered all private and government schools in the national capital to be closed for the remainder of this week. This is primarily on account of the deteriorating air quality. Last night, Sisodia has announced, had announced that uh, primary schools would be shut today and that the closure could be extended based on air quality. The closure is now applicable across all schools and classes for the remainder of the week. The order will be reviewed once again on Sunday. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has written letters to Chief Ministers of Haryana and Punjab respectively, seeking a meeting to discuss how to tackle pollution from stubble burning in the two states. Right, so Donald Trump has touched down in Beijing on the third leg of his area, uh, Asia tour. Sorry about that. Uh, the high-stakes visit will see the U.S. president uh, try to flag the trade deficit between the U.S. and China. Measures to rein in North Korea will also be one of the major talking points. Bloomberg's Tom McKinsey su sums up what both the sides would be hoping to achieve from Trump's visit for the Americans really is that trade deficit that they have with China. We saw the latest numbers for the first 10 months of the year it came in, the surplus for China versus the US when it comes to that trade relationship, about 223 billion US dollars. This has been a major gripe for President Trump, of course, over the last few months. He says that the trade relationship is unfair and unbalanced. So he's going to want to address that and see if there are any measures that China can put in place to shift that in a different direction. And then, of course, you've got North Korea, which looms large. We've heard from the State Department that they're likely the US to put pressure on China to implement sanctions that are already in place on the ground to ensure that this stranglehold on North Korea remains in place or tightens, in fact. The Chinese, they want to see, for example, these restrictions on some of their companies buying up high-tech goods, high-tech firms in the U.S. East. They're also concerned about some of these investigations that are going on in Washington when it comes to intellectual property violations and also steel and aluminum exports. There is, of course, that personal relationship between President Xi and President Trump. And the Chinese are going to be rolling out the red carpet and Trump's going to be visiting the Forbidden City behind me. A personal tour is what he'll be getting with President Xi and his wife before they sit down for dinner. And then tomorrow, that's when we're expected to get some of these deals signed and then the big state banquet at the end of the day. Well, that's most of what you missed in trade today. For the rest, you can log on to the website www.bloombergquint.com and don't forget to tell us what you think about this show and about what we've been showing you over the course of the day. Thanks for watching. This is Bloomberg Quint.